Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a wonderful Monday afternoon of Chem 170 with your host, me, Dr. White. All right, first of all, for those of you who celebrate Rosh Hashanah, have a happy new year. Roshana Tov is how you say it in Hebrew. I hope you all have a healthy and happy new year. Today is the Jewish New Year. I've already done my stuff so I can teach now. But anyways, happy new year. All right, another important thing. You should have gotten an email from me and it's also an announcement on Black One School, D2L. And that is, I've changed my office hours I'll have to change my syllabus. I don't I haven't done that yet. I'll change that. But from now on, my office hours will be on Tuesday and Wednesday from 6 to 7.15. Hopefully that will give you a better time if you need help to come to my office hour. It will be the same Zoom login uh, other than the fact that the times has changed. And that starts this week. So tonight I will not have an office hour. Tomorrow and Wednesday from 6 to 7.15, I will have an office hour. And with that, you've all received an individual email from me with the points you receive for each question on test number one. I mailed that out, I think Saturday, I got that done. <clears throat> and uh, also you'll see in D2L, you'll see your score for test number one. Now, let me just note one thing. I put scores in D2L so you can see what you're getting, but that's not my official grade book. My official grade book is on a spreadsheet on my computer back there. And I also keep it backed up in two separate places. Uh, that's part of being an in industry and learning about backing up things. All right. What I'd like to do today is start out, we'll go through, and let me look, I did my announcement. We'll go through test number one answers. I will cut this out of the video. I'd like my special effects. I'll cut it out of the video. If you're not able to come to our Zoom meeting today, feel free to come to my office hours. If you really need it, email me and I'll set up special time to meet with you on Zoom to go over test number one, but I will be cutting it out of the um, video. Now, when I go through it, the reason why I sent back individual answers as opposed to here's your score, and face-to-face, -face, I'd also hand back your test and you can keep it, but listen carefully. You should never, ever be penalized for mistake I make in grading. You should never ever be penalized for a mistake I make in grading. If I make a mistake in grading, send me an email and I'll check over your test again. I've got a copy of it. If we were face to face, I'd say right on what problems you want me to look at again, give me back your test. So do that. Also check that I added correctly, I did, but you still should check. I have it in the spreadsheet and I use mail merge, which is what you've been sent, but still check. But the key things is where I will make a mistake. If it's a four point question, I might only give you three because most of mine are three. So check. The other thing I should point out, if you, um, in nomenclature, if the base name is wrong, the whole problem is wrong. Otherwise, I'll give one out of three points if you make some kind of other error in nomenclature. For reactions, if you don't get the right structure, unfortunately, there's no partial credit. And let's get to work. That was test number one. Now, first question, if I were in your shoes, well, hopefully you have big feet like mine, but if I were, I'd ask, what grade am I getting now in your class? 
Now, I'm going to assume you've all handed in your labs. If you notice, uh, Dr. White doesn't grade labs hard. Most of you are doing real good, but you got to hand them in. If you got on test one, 90 or greater, right now you're getting an A, 80 to 89, B, 70 to 79, C, 60 to 69, D, below 60, 59, lower, F. Now, there's still a lot, a lot of points. Also, the way I do it, most of you did very good on this test. Uh, uh, don't forget, each and every one of you can still get an A. The lowest test is drop. If you didn't do as well as you want, uh, you have other tests to do better. But I would uh, remind everybody, do the practice problems. Any questions? All right, well, let's continue on. Now, I I don't know if I said I was going to do it today or Wednesday, but let's make it Wednesday, because when I go through the test, it's sort of mind-numbing if I now go through a problem set again. Now, I have to make a personal, omit, not omission, a statement. If it looks like I'm having way too much fun, this new chapter, I am. And I'll explain why now. Remember, if I'm smiling and just having a great time, it's because I am. All right. It's new functional group. It's new chapter time. But before we get into that, on Wednesday, I will go through the alcohol's problem set. On Wednesday, I will go through the alcohol's problem set. And the following Monday, I'll go through the ethers and epoxide problem set. Ooh, another thing. Anybody happen to drive by a gas station and see the sign, this gasoline contains up to 10% ethanol and think, ah, you don't have to do the ah part, but think, that's an alcohol and gasoline. Did you happen to be in, and again, only if you're legal aid, well, you can look at labels if you're not, but did you go in a liquor store or in a part of Jewel or other stores that sell alcoholic beverages or hard liquor? Did you think about that contains ethanol? By the way, the good stuff is absolute and gray goose vodka or the French vodka from Costco. Shh. Anyways, that's an ethanol and alcohol. Did you happen to be in a place or look in your house, pick up rubbing alcohol, and that has isopropyl alcohol, that's a common name for 2-propanol, and that's an alcohol, and you're rubbing alcohol. Did you do that? Remember, organic chemistry is all around you. I stole that from SpongeBob when he does the imagination thing. But anyways, uh, that was one of my favorite with the box. But anyways, think about organic chemistry. It won't hurt. Promise. All right. Let's get into a new chapter. Hold on. New functional groups. And those are, the first one is an aldehyde. And an aldehyde is a carbon double bond to oxygen with a hydrogen and a R group on it. Remember, R is anything with carbon and hydrogens. And that's an aldehyde. And now I'm gonna to have to be honest, Dr. White loves aldehydes. They've been good to me, I've been good to them. I used aldehydes in my research for my PhD degree, my PhD thesis, and my first US patent, I was able to use aldehydes in a way nobody else had found a way to use them. So I love aldehydes. They've been good to me. I've been good to them. Now, there's another way of drawing an aldehyde, actually. And one, sometimes I'll do where I won't show this carbon. I'll just do, and this is shorthand, every bend in a line. I'll try and stay away from this. But organic chemists are lazy. 
that's an aldehyde. Remember, this is the way you write an aldehyde. Or this way, and we get into sugars and carbohydrates. People usually in my software too, draw an aldehyde this way. This is the aldehyde function. I would recommend for this sec chapter, I will, and you should stay away from this, but you can. So these are all ways of drawing aldehydes. And an aldehyde, again, carbon double bond to oxygen with a hydrogen and an R group. I like drawing this way because I think it just looks cute, cool. So does this way. You know, Dr. White's always trying to be a cool dude. And I am trying to. Then the other functional group is a ketone. And a ketone is a carbon double bond to oxygen with not one, but two R groups. And notice I have R prime. And I did that. It's an ugly looking R prime. Let's fix it. And R prime just tells you like X and Y, those R groups can be the same or different. And this is a ketone. And you can draw a ketone like this, which I will. Sometimes I'll be lazy, not lazy. I'll draw it like this, or I could draw it like this, where you don't put that carbon in. But I'm going to try and stay away from this way because it's just easier for students to see that. Now, unlike an aldehyde, well, I'll show it to you in a little while. So the new functional group, this is an aldehyde. This is a ketone. Now, I'll be doing later on, and actually this slide is outmoded. We get into reactions, it turns out, Ketones and aldehydes react the same way, similar. And shorthand this way, that's, and I'll explain this one when I do it. That means if our prime is hydrogen, that's an aldehyde. If our prime is carbons, that's a ketone. That's a way of writing both at the same time. And notice I have alkyl or aryl. Aryl is short for like a benzene ring. Now, part of the aldehyde or ketone And ketone is not spelled with a Y, even though students like to put it in there, is a common feature. Notice they both have a carbon double bond to oxygen, as you can see right here in red. And that's called the carbonyl group. A carbonyl group is a carbon double bond to oxygen. I know of nothing more important to me personally in all of organic chemistry than the carbonyl group. You should know how to describe with words and with a diagram or to draw, what is the carbonyl group? A carbonyl group, how do you describe it with the words? Carbonyl group is carbon double bond to oxygen atom or carbon double bond to oxygen. And you could have put carbon atom. And know this, I know of nothing more important to me personally in all of organic chemistry than the carbonyl group. In fact, I'll wait until everybody's writing it down.
there's nothing in organic chemistry more important than the carbonyl group. And if somebody asked me, Dr. White, what kind of chemist are you? If I were being totally honest, I the only answer I could give is I am a carbonyl synthetic organic chemistry. Again, I'm a carbonyl synthetic organic chemistry. Because the majority of the work I did in organic chemistry has been with the carbonyl group. Dr. Roy loves carbonyl groups. And they're not a functional group, but they're part of many functional groups. Not to scare you, but I will. Your skin is made up of molecules with carbonyl groups. So is your hair. So is the clothes I'm, I'm wearing, the cotton. Those all have carbonyl groups. Scary, isn't it? No. It's just that important. So though the carbonyl group is called a group, it's not a functional group. It's similar to you know, how we say methyl group, a combination of atoms. Well, that's because, and the carbonyl group is found in many, many uh, different functional groups. And we'll cover those this semester. But you should know how to describe with the words and a general di or diagram, what is the carbonyl group? Carbonyl group is carbon double bond to oxygen. And how do you show it? Like that. You want to put ours on there? You can. You don't have to. But that's the carbonyl group. All right. Now, coming chapters, like I've already done with alcohols, I've introduced you to the new functional group, or in this case, functional groups. And then we'll go through nomenclature. Now, for aldehydes, you find the longest chain that includes the aldehyde, which really means I'll never ask this on a test, but the carbon double bond to oxygen in a aldehyde or ketone, that's called the carbonyl carbon. And boy, have I done a lot of amazing things with carbonyl carbons, a lot. That's why Dr. White loves ketones and aldehydes. Now, you name that longest chain as an alkane, and here's the difference. The E at the end of the alkane name, you replace it with AL. The E, and I'll show you this, at the end of the A and E ending, the alkane name, replace it with AL. The carbonyl carbon is always number one. It rocks. Yep, it rocks. So let's look at an aldehyde. No, I'm not an aldehyde. All right. And the question would be, give the IUPAC name for the following molecule. Five carbons across for those who are counting. All right, now, as always, look at a molecule, look for what's different. Ooh, oxygen. And it's double bond to carbon. And that carbon, there's a hydrogen. And then all of these are carbons. And what is this? It's an aldehyde. And how do you name an aldehyde? You have to find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon. One, two, three, four, five. You name that as an alkane.
and you drop the E and you add AL. And no number is needed since everybody knows this is always going to be number one. I'm done. Pence and L. Now, word of warning. Everybody listening? Alcohols have an OL ending. Aldehydes have an AL ending. Make sure on test number two, if it's OL, make it clear. If it's AL, make it clear. Because trust me, you don't want me guessing. Is that an O or an A? Because I have a 50-50 chance of being wrong. Now let's look at this molecule. And the question is, and I'm gonna give share, you're gonna have fun too, but I wanna do this one first. Give the IUPAC name for the following. Sometimes I'll draw the H over here like this and that's standard, you'll see in a book too. And if we look at this, what's different? Oxygen, double bond to carbon, hydrogen, and carbons. This is an aldehyde. And how many carbons are in the longest chain? One, including the carbonyl carbon, two, three, four, or down here would be four. That would be butane. But it's an aldehyde. Drop the E, add AL, butanel. This is carbon one. You don't put that down. It's always going to be carbon one. I have, oh, it's your old friend, the methyl group. And it's on carbon three. So this is three methyl butanel, AL ending for aldehydes. Oh, one thing I should mention, good habits I don't break, and I always write my aldehyde carbonyl on the right. You can write it on the left, but I rarely, if ever, do that. Your turn. What's the IUPAC name for the following molecule? Your turn. And don't forget, Office hours are now Tuesday, Wednesday, 6 to 7, 15 p.m. Same Zoom login. Seven across. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's hard to count on a screen. You can use your finger to point. <laughs> In a classroom, I say the same thing. All right, one person's done. When you're done, give me a thumbs up. All right, everybody's done. What's different? What's not carbon? What's not how, how, ooh, hydrogen and oxygen? Double bond to carbon. It's got a hydrogen on it. And it's got all these carbons. It's an aldehyde. How many carbons in the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon? That's the carbon double bond to oxygen. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I counted right. Seven. And seven is heptane. Remember for an aldehyde? Find the alkane name, drop the E, 
replace it with AL. No number is needed because everybody knows that's always going to be number one. I'm done. That's heptanel. With that, it's time to take a five minute break. I'll see you in five minutes. I can get up and stretch. See you in five.
Oh no, I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. I think you all know where that came from. If not, Alice in Wonderland. All right, we're talking about nomenclature of aldehydes. And it looks like I had a big smile on my face. I do, because I love aldehydes and ketones. And we're doing nomenclature. And you just remember aldehydes, carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen with a hydrogen R group. Find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon, carbon double bond to oxygen, name it as an alkane, drop the E, add AL. The carbonyl carbon is always number one. So here's one more for you to have fun with. And say hello to my old friend right here. And after we're done, I'll give you its name once you try first. Give the IUPAC name for the following molecule. And I should mention, test number two will be like test number one, somewhat. There'll be nomenclature questions. Here's the name. Here's the structure. Give the IUPAC name. Here's the name. Give, draw the structure and there'll be reactions and general knowledge too. I won't ask how many bonds to carbon because you already figured that out by now, I hope. But anyways, two nomenclature questions. The first one we're covering right now, here's the name, here's the structure, give the name. And remember, I think I mentioned earlier, I will cut out a video. I like my special effects here. Uh, test number one, answer coverage. You need to come to my office hour uh, anytime, and I'll be able to go over to test number one with you. Also, if you can come to my office hours, and you really need to see the answers for test number one, email me and we'll set up a special time to meet on Zoom. All right, everybody done? Okay, well, in that case, I better get to work. All right, what's different about this molecule? What's well, not carbon? What's well, not hydrogen? Ooh, an oxygen, double bond to carbon with a hydrogen and an R group. This here is my R group, and that's an aldehyde. And how do you name an aldehyde? You have to find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon. I'll never ask on a test, but I'm going to use it a lot. And the carbonyl carbon is the carbon double bond to oxygen and an aldehyde, and also a ketone too, we'll see. And how many carbons in the longest chain? We can go one, two, three, four, or you can do one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have a choice, four or six, which is the greater number. Isn't the math difficult in there? Hopefully I'll pick six. Six, alkane, hexane, aldehydes, find the longest chain, name it as an alkane, drop the E, add AL, be sure to make sure I can see it, it's not OL, that's hexanal. This is carbon one. As soon as I say that, that's all spoken for. What's two carbon alkyl group? Ethyl. And it's on carbon two. And that's two ethyl hexanel. And I use two ethyl hexanel in my first US patent to make things nobody else could. So say hello to my very, very good friend, 2-ethyl hexanel. Bet you didn't know you could have molecules as friends. You can. 
at least I can. Anybody can. All right. Now, one molecule I didn't mention, but I should, is when R is a benzene ring. Remember, this is an aldehyde. Actually, you've seen this molecule already, and this is called I can spell it right. Benzaldehyde. And that was the old name, which in a number of places, you've already seen some already. IUPAC said, we're not going to get them to change, meaning organic chemists. We'll call it what they're calling it, benzaldehyde. And the next time you smell anything with a cherry or almond flavor or a smell or taste, you're tasting or smelling benzaldehyde. And remember in the uh, aromatic lab, which I've graded, I'm pretty much up to date on the labs. You can look in D2L for your lab scores. Uh, just like with tests, you ever have a question on any lab why you got a certain score, ask me. There's no such thing as a dumb question in my class. All right, and this is benzaldehyde. And you should know, if I put that structure down, the name is benzaldehyde. Now, there are two types of nomenclature question. One is, here's the structure, give the IUPAC name. The other is, here's the name, draw the structure. I had to change something. All right, I'll do this one once I clean it up. That's better. And so it's 3 methyl oxenal. How do you decode this? You start from the left, right, and go left. AL ending. Aldehyde. If that were an E octane, eight carbons. And I put it on the right. You could do the left too, but I won't. This is a habit and good habits. And that's my oxenal. Now, methyl group, oh, you know what that is, CH3. And it's on carbon three. Remember the carbonyl carbon of an aldehyde is always one. This is two, this is three, methyl group. There's four bonds to carbon. So I'm putting in my hydrogens. Make sure, because it's now your solemn responsibility that I put the right number of hydrogens on each carbon. And here, we started from the right to the left, AL ending aldehyde, that were in E, octane, eight carbons. The end carbon is the carbon double bond to oxygen. And that's always carbon number one and carbon three. There's a methyl group. So it's your turn. Why don't you draw the structure for four T butyl known and L? We'll say that five times quickly. No, you don't have to. And for those of you at home with your 
webcam on. Thank you from Dr. White. For those who are oh, not uh, with your home at, with your web code, uh, webcam on. Thank you for coming to my class from Dr. White. For those of you watching my YouTube video, thank you also. Must be the new year giving thanks to everybody. It is. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, Andrew. All right, how do you decode this to know what to draw? You start from the left, from the right, move left. AL ending tells you aldehyde. If that were an E, no name, nine carbons. Aren't you glad I've got you to memorize that art early on? Because we use it, three, six, nine. The end carbon, you can do right or left. I'm gonna do the left, right always. This is my aldehyde, that's carbon one, two, three, four. I have a T-butyl group. I'm not gonna call it tert-butyl because I'm gonna be what I always have been for many, many decades, a lazy organic chemist. And we know there are four bonds to carbon. So if you know your science fiction, I'm gonna be going at warp drive now. And I'm done. And again, for tert butyl, nonanel, aldehyde, nine carbons, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I counted correctly. And that's how you do it. Oh, let's do another one. These are fun. Three five dimethyl four isopropyl decanal. If you're going to a football party this weekend, you can write this on a napkin and ask, "Do you know the name of this?" No, people don't want to hear how you pack names at football parties, so don't. And a commercial from Dr. White. Don't forget, new office hours. They're now Tuesday and Wednesday from 6 to 7.15, same Zoom login. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, everybody else. I can get to work. How do you decode this to know what to draw? Start from the right, move left. AL ending. Aldehyde. 
if that were an E, that would be decane. So I better get to work. 10 carbons. It's an aldehyde. So one end has the carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen. And then this is always carbon one, two, three, four, five. So on carbon three is a methyl group, carbon four, oh, it's getting crowded here, isopropyl, carbon five methyl group. Again, carbon three and five, I have my methyl group, carbon four isopropyl, there's four bonds to carbon, so it's time to put in hydrogens. Hold on, let me check, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And I didn't. And that's how you do aldehydes. Remember aldehyde, carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen with a hydrogen and R group on it. And Dr. White loves aldehydes. Uh, remember when I talked about uh, beta carotene? That's the double bond molecule that's responsible for the yellow of carrots. Let's do something real. This will never be on a test, but everybody see the structure on your screen right now? Beta carotene, your body is able to break it down to make this molecule. This is called retinal. That's the common name, not the IUPAC. I don't, I don't even know the IUPAC. It would take me a little while to figure it out, but I think I could. But anyways, here at the C here, this is another way of drawing, like I showed you, the aldehyde. And this aldehyde helps with your retina in your eye, which is why you eat carrots for better eyesight, how much it helps you improve it. But here's an aldehyde in your daily life. It looks like that. And these models for me are totally useless. But aldehyde, this one helps your vision. All right, let's get into ketones. See, I'm smiling again. Oh, I love ketones. My PhD thesis dealt with ketones. And my last US patent, I used certain special ketones in a way nobody ever did before. All right, let's look at ketones. Find the longest chain, which includes the carbonyl carbon. Name that. Now, I should have here. It can be a ring. You cannot have an aldehyde in a ring. You can have a ketone. And cycloketones, Dr. White's getting very happy now, because that's what I did a major part of my PhD thesis on cyclic, very specialized cyclic ketones, and also aldehydes, but also really ketones. Now, name that as an alkane or cycloalkane. Now, drop the E at the end and replace it with O-N-E. 
I've never said, and I'm going to even have to force myself say it, replace it with one. Now, I always say O-N-E. Now, for acyclic, and I'll go through this, the carbonyl carbon is given a number, and that's always got priority, the lowest number closest to the end of the chain. In a ring, no numbers, because the carbonyl carbon in a ring is always number one. So, and the rest is the rest of the IUPAC rules. All right, question would be, and I've been lazy. Oh, I forgot to mention something. I'll come right back to this in a second. Everybody get the feeling or understand why I call my problems practice problems after test number one? All right, so question is, give the IUPAC name for this molecule. And how do you do that? You look for what's different. What's not carbon, what's not hydrogen. Oh, look. It's an oxygen, and it's bond to carbon here, with carbons here and here. And that's a ketone. And how do you name a ketone? Find the longest chain, in this case it's a acyclic ketone, and name it as an alkane, drop the E, add A-N, Add to that O-N-E, and you need a number. So what's the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon? One, two, three, four. So that's butane. I'm going to drop the E, which I did, add O-N-E, butanone. This is an acyclic compound. If I start from here, it's on carbon two. If I start from this side, it's on carbon three. And let me clean this up a little. So which is the smaller number, two or three? And hopefully I'll pick two. So this is two butanol. Uh, special uh, thing I'm going to ask all of you to do. If by 3.30 I haven't talked to you about the garage door story, dog story, ask me about that. The garage dog story. Okay? It deals with ketones and dogs and my garage. All right. Let's take a look at another one. Now, if there are alkyl groups on there, you just count from there. And I'll do one, right? I'll let you do one. Remember, look for what's different. Name the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon. Drop the E, add O, N, E, have a number. And the rest of the alkyl groups, you know how to do on your own. Fine, just look at the clock. Time flies when you're having fun with aldehydes and ketones. Doesn't it? 
you don't have to agree with me on that. Actually, time flies for me when I'm having fun with organic chemistry. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, Ignacio. I remember I'm trying, thank you, Andrew. I try and give everybody time to finish. So please be patient. All right, let's look at how do you name this? You look for what's different, what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen. Ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbon. And it's got carbons here and carbons here. They're different. They could be the same too. This is a ketone. If I can spell it right. How about that, a Kentone? I'll name it after me. Uh, no. All right. Find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon, because this is acyclic, not in a ring. Name it as an alkane. Drop the E. Add O-N-E plus a number. And then you name the rest of the alkyl groups. So longest chain, one. Two, this has got to include this carbon, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, which is longer, five or six, and time's up, hopefully I'll pick six, that's hexane. Drop the E, add O-N-E, hexanone, and then what carbon is the carbonyl carbon number? And if it's closest to this end, it's on carbon two. We go to the other end, one, two, three, four, five, which is smaller, two or five. I hope we all pick two. As soon as I say two hexanone, that's all spoken for. Oh, it's your good buddy, the methyl group. And what carbon is it on? Four. So this is four methyl, two hexanone. Find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon. Name it as an alkane, hexane. Drop the E at O N E. Put a number. What carbon is carbonyl is close to the end of the chain? And then the alkyl group is four methyl. Now let's look at where you can't do this in aldehydes, it doesn't exist. You can have this. Now, let's look at what I just drew. Drew. Get my English verb tense correctly. Ooh, English and organic chemistry. Nah. All right. We have a ring. How many carbons in the ring? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's cyclo. Hexane. But notice here, I have a carbon double bond to oxygen. Then right here, I have carbons. I'll call that R. Right here, it doesn't matter which side you call R prime. And they're connected together in the ring. Again, you got carbons here and here. And so this is a ketone. 
it's a cycloketone. Dr. White's really happy now. So I love cycloketones. And you find a ring, name it as an alkane, cycloalkane. And add O-N-E, no number. Because the carbonyl carbon in a ring is always one. Of all the functional groups, carbonyl carbon in a ring, and then the other place too, always has highest priority. That's because carbonyl groups rock. They're the best. So cyclohexanone, and I'm done. Again, drop the add O-N-E. And then you number it just like everything else. All right, let's have you try one first. I could have also written this compound this way. All I've done is rotate it 360 divided by 5, whatever that is. I guess it would be 60... No, it'll be 72 degrees. <laughs> so what would be the name, IUPAC name, of this molecule? Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, Christiana. And we'll wait for everybody to finish. Thank you. All right. What do we have that's different? Oxygen, double bond to carbons. Carbons here and here. This so happens our prime and our double prime are connected together in the ring. And this is a ketone. Find the cycloalkane. Drop the E. Replace it with O-N-E. And no number, because the carbonyl carbon in a ring is always number one. So if we look at this ring, one, two, three, four, five bends in the line, five carbons. I'll come down here, cyclo, don't forget the cyclo, pentane, five carbons is pentane. So cyclopentane is a five carbon ring. Drop the E, add O-N-E, and that's cyclopentanone. And the one earlier was cyclohexanone. And I don't know if I showed you this, I might have, but It used to be called Aldridge Chemical, uh, except all cookies. Oh, they changed their website. I think they got, I hope they didn't drop it. But anyways, Everybody see something on the middle of the screen? They just didn't put it on top. They rotated it 60 degrees. And that's cyclohexanone. It's a ketone. How much is, are they charging nowadays for, let's go to 
a lower grade. And one kilogram is $65. Not cheap, but nothing's cheap these days like the old days, which they weren't cheap then either. Oh, let's have some real fun. Is that a pretty molecule or what? Now you know he's an organic chemist, because it is. Give the IUPAC name for the following molecule, three points each. And we'll wait for everybody to finish. Doesn't it feel good you can do organic chemistry and hopefully it's not too painful? Thank you. Let's get to work. What's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydrogen? Ooh, oxygen, double bond to carbons, carbons here and here. It's a ketone. Now, it's a cyclic ketone where R and R prime are bond together. And you find the cycloalkane. Drop the E, add O-N-E. And the carbonyl carbon is always number one. So if I look at this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's hexane. It's a ring, cyclohexane. It's a ketone in a ring, cyclohexanone. I have on carbon one, my carbonyl carbon, which is why I named it one. Carbon two, I have a methyl group. Carbon four, I have an isopropyl. So this would be two methyl, four isopropyl, Wow, I just got it all in. Can everybody read that okay? 2-methyl-4-isopropyl cyclohexanone. Again, carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen, and a ring. Find the cycloalkane name, name it, drop the E, add O-N-E. No number. For the ketone, because the carbonyl carbon is always going to be one, I like the special effects, on in a ring. And then if that's one, you go in the direction clockwise or counterclockwise to give the other substituents the lowest numbers. And that's how you do it. By the way, I should introduce you to an old friend of mine. Do not write this down. 
This ring system is called 222 by cyclooctane. And I made this ketone, actually substituted ketones, that's by cyclo 222 octanone. Say hello to a very dear old friend of mine. I'll never put that on a test. That'd be cruel, unusual punishment. So there's two types of nomenclature. One is here's the structure, give the IUPAC name, and the other is draw the structure. And how do you do that? You start from the right, move left. O-N-E ending, ketone. If that were an E, cyclobutane is a ring. You call it a square, I call it a ring. And one of the carbons on that ring is going to be double bond oxygen. And there you are. And I'll do one more and then I'm gonna let you have fun too. How would you, it would be, draw the following structure, three points each. And A would be 2-methyl cyclopentanone. How do you do that? You start from the right and move left. O-N-E ending. Ketone. And if that were E, cyclopentane, five-membered ring. And most of you are going to put the ketone up there. That's one. On carbon two is a methyl group. So start from the right, move left. O and the ending, ketone. If that were an E, cyclopentane, five carbon ring. We have a methyl group. It's on carbon two. Oh, by the way, you could have also, most of you are going to, go clockwise, this would be the same molecule, same thing like saying, here's my left hand, close your eyes. Oh, look, something different. No, come on, you just rotate your hand. And these two, are the same. All I've done is rotated them. Why don't you draw the structure for cyclohexanone? And thank you all for making me a YouTube star. <laughs> Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, everybody else. All right. How do you draw this? You start from the right, move left. O-N-E ending immediately tells you ketone. If this were an E, that'd be cyclohexane, which is a six-membered ring. Since it's a ketone, one of the bends will be a carbon double bond oxygen. And you can put it on any one. Most of you are going to put it on top, so I will.
and wanted to do this one, 3 n butyl cyclopentanoin. Draw the structure for that. Thank you. It's about everybody's almost done, but I'll be patient. Everybody's done, so I don't have to be patient anymore. All right, how did you go with this? Know what to draw? You start from the right, move left. O-N-E ending, ketone. Remember, ketone is not spelled with a Y. That were an E cyclopentane five membered ring. It's a ketone. So one of these carbons in the ring is double bond to oxygen. If this is one, this is two, this is three, and butyl is four carbons. And we're done. Again, O-N-E ending, ketone. If this were an E, cyclopentane, five carbon ring, it's a ketone. So one of the carbons here is double bond to oxygen. And then that's one, two, three, and butyl group. And if I look at the clock, it's just about time for our break. So I'll give you an extra 30 seconds. Come back at two. 50. Let's come back at 250. For those of you with analog watches, that's when the big hand is on the 10. And I'll see you in five.
Let's get going. Train's leaving the station. Uh, I don't know if I told you this. Dr. White's a railroad enthusiast. Have been since I was a little boy. So my father used to take me to the south side of Chicago, the great train yards they have there. And on Sunday morning, that was the only day he had off. He had a drugstore then. We'd watch the big steam engines, these behemoths, come in and out. And they had a turntable where they were turning them, either parking them or doing maintenance. And we'd just stand there for a couple hours enjoying ourselves. But anyways, let's get back to work. So I've gone through nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. Remember, an aldehyde, carbonyl, carbon, double bond oxygen with a hydrogen R group. That's an aldehyde. Whoa. All right. Time out while I close this. Sorry about that. Part of the problem is I have with all of the things I've got up, it opens up so many other files that it confuses Word. All right, everybody see an aldehyde on your screen on my whiteboard? All right, this is an aldehyde. As you learn, Drop the E, add AL no, uh, number. Because the carbonyl carbon is always number one. And you can't have an aldehyde in a ring. And this is a ketone. and find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon. Remember, carbonyl group, carbon double bonds oxygen. That carbon double bond oxygen called the carbonyl carbon. I'll never ask that on the test. What's a carbonyl carbon? But I'll use that a lot. Did I tell you I'm a world authority in ketones and allies? in carbonyl carbons? I am. And, at least in my world, no, actually in real world too. Drop the E, change that to O-N-E for acyclic, meaning not in a ring. You need a number. And for cyclic, meaning in a ring, no number, carbonyl carbon is always number one. All right. 
let's get back to my slide. Hold on, I'll wait until you're done copying. All right, everybody done copying? If not, go back and look at the video. <laughs> oh, I should ask, give me a thumbs up if you've looked at the video and they've been helpful. Thank you. Which is why I spend the time making and posting those videos. All right, now, I'm going to ask you to learn two common names. There are others, but only for these two molecules. And I'll explain uh, something very important after I go through this. And when it comes to common names on a test or my final, I'll never ask you what's the common name for this molecule, but I'll ask you to know how to draw it. Now, the simplest aldehyde, it turns out R can be hydrogen. And this is formaldehyde. And you can also draw it this way. And that's the simplest aldehyde. And it's got the common name formaldehyde. And I'm an expert in formaldehyde. And I'll explain why in a little while. I worked for a company years ago, that was the largest manufacturer of formaldehyde in the world. And I'll talk more about that in a little while. Now, the other thing is acetone. By the way, nobody ever calls formaldehyde. The IUPAC name would be methanol. Nobody calls it that. It's called formaldehyde. How it got that name, I don't know, but it's formaldehyde. Now, the simplest ketone which I can draw like this, or a lot of times I'll draw like this. Is acetone. Nobody ever calls that two propanone. It's acetone. Now, acetone, one of the main uses is nail polish remover. And this is acetone. And if you go to any big box store like Walmart, or as my friend, one of my friends always calls it, that French store, Target, Target, for those of you who don't speak French, and that you can go and they'll have a wall of nail polish remover in Walmart. I don't know about Target. I don't go there that often. Uh, and it's acetone. And they put a little bit of fragrance in there. So it smells nice, but essentially it's acetone. I'll talk more about it, but how many of you have ever used the nail? Notice Dr. White doesn't polish his nails anymore, but never did. Actually, my grandfather, when I was a boy, if you went into a barber shop, they had a manicure, as most good ones did, and they'd put, cut your nails and put a clear coat on your nails. Men used to wear that. My grandfather did. But anyways, uh, how many of you have ever seen the nail polish that you put your fingers underneath the light to make it dry? It's actually called curing. By the way, nail polish is very sophisticated organic chemistry. Well, it turns out the other type of nail polish, which before those nails, that type of nail polish was invented, was the most popular. But that didn't do a good job, at least my students told me in the past, at getting it off your fingers, removing the nail polish, and acetone does. Let's do something. I haven't done this before. Great moments in.
Let's see what's in store. All right. Did everybody see this one? This is a popular brand or used to be. I don't know. I don't buy that much nail polish remover. And if you notice, what does it say? The formula is 98% acetone. They put a little oil in there, whatever. But anyways. And a cucumber fragrance creates a relaxing spa-like experience. Well, Dr. White's never been to a spa. If any of you have been to a spa, was it relaxing? <laughs> Hopefully it was. Well, that's acetone. So let's get back. You should know if I ask on a test, what's the structure of formaldehyde? It's this way or this. You should know if I ask on a test, what's the structure of acetone is you can draw this ketone this way or this way. It's when R and R prime are both methyls. You know CH3 is a methyl. You should also know acetone is nail polish remover. So if I ask, give an example of a ketone you could use in your daily life, and you could say acetone nail polish remover. And obviously, you know, it's got a ketone in it. All right. Now I need to talk about something very serious. And uh, it's not a fun story at all, but it's very serious. The switch, will this ever be on test or a final, is in the off position. But I feel honor bound to tell you about this. And that's formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a very useful chemical but it's also a very dangerous chemical. It's a very bad uh, hazardous chemical. It can do various bad things to your body and if you inhale it and it's bad. Now, how bad? Everybody see on your screen now, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, when was this? Why, some of you, I don't know, how many of you remember 2005? You may be pretty young then, you may not remember it. I have to remember generation gap, even though it just seems like yesterday, that's what? Uh, about 18 years ago, uh, 19 years ago. That's for some of you, you were very little. Well, anyways, I wasn't. And this was tremendous hurricane, category five, and it wiped out, it hit mainly New Orleans and the area around there in uh, Louisiana. And also neighboring states that did a lot of damage too, but it wiped out major parts of Louisiana and notice here, Mississippi. And because of that, it destroyed both by flooding and the actual hurricane, major amount of housing in those areas. So what did they do? The government and FEMA, and unfortunately, and this is my personal uh, opinion, the president of the United States was George W. Bush, and he had put in place of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, a, uh, I, no, I better not say J-E-R-K, uh, by the name of Michael Brown. Michael Brown's only previous experience was running horse shows, political appointment. Well, here we have this major, major disaster. And what they did was they contract to a number of companies, mainly located in Indiana, to build trailers. And these trailers were called Katrina trailers. And
also known as FEMA trailers. And people who were living in this after the they were built, because there was this all the housing that was totally destroyed, were starting to get sick. And they don't show it here. But anyways, and they made, I think, I don't know how many hundred thousands of trailers. There was a very brave woman, or is, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Does everybody see on the screen toxic trailers? All right, here's a picture of this very brave woman. That's Becky Gillette. Now, after the Katrina trailers had been out for a while, it was in the news that Becky had challenged President Bush, the President of the United States, the head of FEMA, and also the head of the EPA by saying excess formaldehyde in these trailers were causing people to get very sick. And I mean very sick. I'm not sure if any died at that time, but pets had actually died. But children and older people and even younger people were getting very sick. I mean, really sick. I never asked Becky how she found out. In fact, next week or two when I have time, I haven't done it in a while, I'll shoot her an email. But somehow she was able to determine and she was a volunteer for the Sierra Club at this point. With her own money, out of her own pocket, she was able to prove that formaldehyde in the air was causing people to get sick. Now, President Bush publicly and FEMA and EPA said Becky's wrong. And she actually testified at Congress. And I'll explain a little more why I'm talking about this. And Becky, being standing up to the president of the United States, the head of FEMA, the head of the EPA, saying you're wrong, that takes a lot of courage, and she has it. Well, anyways, at this time, I already was an expert in formaldehyde. And when I heard about this, wow, I knew about the dangers of formaldehyde. So I worked at a company, my last fad, and I used formaldehyde. Now, why is there a problem? Well, it turned out, and this is my conjecture, but I bet on it. And if I bet on it, I know I'm telling you the truth, or at least I know I'd win. And I'm almost positive this is true. There is a shortage from all the building that had to be done of lumber in the United States, especially plywood, which was needed to make the trailers. And plywood, and I worked for one of the major companies that made this, you take a phenolic resin, a resin is a fancy name for the word glue, to hold uh, sheets of wood together to make plywood or oriented or particle board pieces or, of wood glued together with a phenolic resin. And that's made with formaldehyde. If you don't do the chemistry right, and it's easy to cheap or not to do it right, you have unreacted formaldehyde in that resin glue. Well, if you put that on the wood, that comes out of the wood into the air around it. That's called excess formaldehyde or just how much uh, formaldehyde it's evolving. And because in the United States of OSHA, the Occupation Safety Hazard Act, before, well before Katrina, any product that gives off more than a few p uh, tenth of a percent free formaldehyde, that's some formaldehyde coming off, you've got to have special uh, breathing masks. You've got to have your workers monitored by doctors. So anybody who makes, which I work for a company, uh, resins, keeps their formaldehyde level below that tenth of percent. Well, not in China. They have no OSHA. Well, it turns out, a lot of those companies went to China to get wood, cheap, and it was available. And it had a lot of free formaldehyde, and that caused people to get sick. Now, why am I telling this story? Because one, anything made with wood that's not totally solid could give off free formaldehyde. 
And that's what happened with those trailers. Now, at that time when it was in the news and Becky was fighting the president over, yes, it is, no, it isn't, being the socially responsible person I am, the way my parents raised me and being now socially responsible formaldehyde expert, I contact, was able to contact Becky, track down her phone number and said, look, I'm a consultant. I have patents in formaldehyde. I work for the largest producer of formaldehyde. Any way I can help you, I will, and I won't charge you one penny. And she asked for my help. And one of the things she asked me to do, because of my credentials, luckily, uh, President Bush's term expired, and he was placed by President Obama. She asked me, can you write a letter to the President of the United States and also the head of the EPA to talk about regu new regulations are needed for formaldehyde and wood products and because of what happened with Katrina. And I said, of course, and I did. I actually got letters back from them. It's probably robo sign, but still it's in my file back there as a treasure. But I was not the only one who helped out. Before that, in California, there's called the CARB laws, California Air and Resource Board laws. And before Katrina, they actually had levels of free formaldehyde and wood that you couldn't have above this level. And we pushed, and finally we did have that happen, where the CARB laws became national law. But that doesn't mean everybody follows it. All right, a couple of important things why I'm teaching you this. If you look on this website, do you see where it says tests for formaldehyde? Kits for test trailers for uh, formaldehyde can be purchased from this company, Advanced Chemical Sensors. I don't know if this price is still valid or not. And what then, here's their website. This is the company that Becky used. If you call, if you get a kit, you get this disc, you put it in a room for 24 hours, you take the disc, put it in a mailer they give you, send it back to you, and you can ask her either they'll send it by US mail or email you the percent formaldehyde. And if it's of a certain level, they'll tell you it's dangerous and you got to do something. And this is the kit, and this is what Becky used. And at first, uh, EPA said this is not right. And they tried to prove them wrong, and they couldn't. Therefore, this is a good company. And why am I telling you this? Because if you know anybody who's got a new baby, they probably went out and got new furniture in a, ba a crib. Well, if that furniture is in solid wood, it was probably made in China. And guess what? it might be giving off formaldehyde. Then again, it might not. You should have them test it. Uh, Becky had me talk to some people who are actually going out to homes throughout the United States. And the horror stories I heard was, how should I say, very sad, very disgusting. In fact, one person in California, a, co a couple, he was a hockey player back then in the National Hockey League, which means he's pretty healthy. And she was an air steward, a stewardess. And when they were home, they were getting sick. When they were out on the road, him playing hockey, she flying somewhere, they weren't sick. Well, it turned out they had spent about $50,000 having their kitchen redone, including all new cabinets. Well, they all came from China, and they're giving off formaldehyde. And they had to get those ripped off. This is before the laws. Now, after the law, about it's been a couple of years now, there's a company called Lumber Liquidators that sell very cheap uh, or inexpensive wood flooring and other wood products. And 60 Minutes did an expose. How come they're so cheap? Well, they went to China to have their wood made, which was particle glued together and 60 minutes went undercover and went to the same company and said we'd like to buy yours how is it on formaldehyde oh don't worry we just put it meets the 
uh, law, but don't worry. And turned out 60 Minutes went in a number of cities, and Chicago was one of them, got the products, and a lot of them were high in formaldehyde because the company they were buying from was in China cheating. They marked the box under this percent, meets the CARB laws, and didn't. So that's why I'm telling you that. And that's why I'm sharing you that information. You know, anybody who's got new furniture or even moved into a new trailer or using it, have them check. One of the saddest things was while well, under uh, President Bush, once they found out about these Katrina trailers, they had a, instead of destroying them all, they said they went and sold them as government surplus and they put a sign on the outside danger, don't spend a lot of time in here. Why are you buying a trailer? You're gonna live in there even if you go on a vacation. So anyways, I thought I'd share that. Like I said, I've talked a number of times on the phone. This was before Zoom, so I never met her in person, but I talked to her and there's probably one of the bravest people I've ever met in my life the way she fought the president of the United States Bush. Any questions on that? All right, now in a lighter story. There's some common names and what I'm gonna show you now. For ketones, and this will not be on a test, but I thought I'd share after that story, a little lighter thing on ketones. One way of naming it is name each R group and then add the word ketone. And there's another common name for aldehydes I'm not gonna go into either, which I know, but I'm not gonna, well, there's a ketone called methyl nonal ketone. This is one carbon, this is nine carbons. Then you have the carbonyl carbon. So it's a carbon that's 11 carbons long. And the IUPAC name, and I've never taught you 11, is undecane. And again, switches off to undecanone. So it's this ketone. And here's my story. This is a fun story. True story. All my stories are true. Back when I started in the chemical industry, I started working at this company. Then it was called Armac. It was bought by the Dutch. It became Axo Chemi. Then they bought Nobel Chemist, uh, Chemical Company. It's called Axo Nobel. And the division about two years ago I used to work for was sold off as the Nuri division. But anyways, I started out as a bench chemist and a research chemist. And here I am, fresh PhD out of grads, or actually postdoc. And we had Monday through Friday, and it was flex time, which was nice. I started at seven, most did, and we were out at four, which means you could beat a lot of the traffic on the highways. This place was located, it's no longer there, it's been torn down. Uh, right near Brookfield Zoo in McCook, Illinois. Well, every Friday about 3.30, our research group, of there was about 12 people in it, we'd be sitting around and, you know, winding down, end of the week, you know, shooting the bulls, we used to call it. And I had an apartment in Chicago at that time, and I lived about a block and a half away from Lake Michigan, if you're familiar with uh, uh, East Rogers Park near Loyola University, that's where I live, which means if you're near the beach, parking is awful. Well, it turns out through politics, I met this person who about a block away less from my apartment had a condo building with four apart three apartments or three condos, 
he lived in one and he rented the other two or so uh, out. And one of the renters didn't own a car. So he had a three car garage in the alley behind his condo building. And I found out about it and he rented one of the garages for me, which was pretty nice. Now we started at seven, which means it took me about 40 minutes to get to work, about six o'clock in the morning. I go to my garage, open up the door, take, come out, get my car out and go to work. Well, this is before they had the, what we call the poop laws. And I started going out there and in front of my garage door, somebody's dog left a present. And I was getting, I had an old shovel and I'd get rid of it. It's not a fun way to start your morning, cleaning up someone's dog's mess. Well, here it is Friday, I'm standing, or we're talking about it, and I'm pretty upset. And I say, you know, I have a problem where I live. I rent this garage, and somebody's dog is pooping in front of my garage door every morning in this alley. And one of the older chemists said, don't you know about one of the products we make? I said, what? And he said, methyl nonal ketone. Now, if you work for a chemical company, they have what's called a sample room. And sample room provides samples to customers or potential customers, or if you're using those chemicals to make other things, they'll send it to you if you work for the company. And he said, you should get methyl nono ketone. I said, I still don't know what's that. And he said, well, any dog or animal repellent has about four or five percent methyl nonal ketone and some other stuff in there. But the methyl nonal ketone is the active ingredient that keeps dogs away or other animals. Doesn't hurt them. They just don't like the smell of it. So I went out, I picked up a phone immediately and got the sample room. And because I worked for the company, I said, can you send me some methyl nonal ketone over? And I forgot who I talked to and said, all right, well, so how much you need? I said, what size do you have? Well, you want a quart? And I'll say, yeah. Well, in the stuff you buy in the stores, that's 5%. This is pure 100%. So I got a quart bottle, took it home, got some plastic eyedroppers. And when I got home, took the top off with an eyedropper, put a couple lines right in front of my garage. Guess what? Next morning, no poop. And that's my story. Now, whenever it rained, it washed it away. So I put another line of that. And when I moved to this house, I had someone with a dog causing problems. I still had a, a bottle of that. I went out there on my sidewalk and put a bunch of drops of it over. And that stopped that pretty good. Dogs didn't want to walk down that sidewalk. It doesn't hurt them. They just don't like the smell of it. And that's my methyl nonal ketone story. All right, now we've talked about some of these and the switch is totally off. Where do you find aldehydes and ketones in nature? Well, benzaldehyde, you know, is the smell of cherries and almonds. This will never be on a test. Cinema aldehyde, which you did already. has this structure, and that's responsible for the smell and taste of cinnamon, vanilla, and you've already seen. And let's look up raspberry ketone. Again, switch is totally off. Everybody see the structure? Notice they use the bend in a line to carbon, and the line is a methyl. You have a methyl group here, carbonyl, carbon, carbon, benzene ring, hydroxyl group, 
and this gives you raspberry taste and smell. How it does that to your brain, I have no idea, but I know it's a ketone. All right, let's talk about how do you make aldehydes and ketones? Well, we've already gone through this, so this should be old hat. You take a primary alcohol, oxidize it, you get an aldehyde. And now you know what this is called, aldehyde. I mentioned it earlier. Remember, this O in a bracket means oxidizing agent. That could be potassium permanganate, sodium dichromate, so uh, potassium dichromate, but I'll never ask you that. And you lose a hydrogen here and here. And now you get a carbonyl hydrogen R group aldehyde. Now I can write the name down. We already went through this reaction, so I can do the following. Here's a fun one for you to have fun with. Give the product, organic product or products for the following reaction. And a reminder, don't forget, new office hours. You should have gotten an email, and it's also on the announcement of D2L. It will be Tuesday and Wednesday from 6 to 7.15. And when you're done, you know what you should do. Thank you. I see two of you are done. We will be patient. Everybody's done. So now you don't, don't have to be patient anymore. All right, look for what's different. What's not carbon, what's not hydrogen should get your attention like that. Oxygen with a hydrogen and a carbon with more carbons. This is a primary alcohol. And why do I have to worry about primary alcohol? because it's an oxidation. And you lose a hydrogen there, hydrogen there, and you form an aldehyde. So this is my R group. Another way of thinking of it is to break carbon-carbon single bonds. No, so have one, two, three carbons crossed. Methyl, one, two, three carbons across methyl. The carbon with the alcohol will be my carbonyl carbon. Now I can use those words because you know that's carbon double bond to oxygen with a hydrogen on there. There's four bonds to carbon. One thing I didn't mention, notice this carbon right here. It's got a bond here. That's one. Two plus two here is four. So the carbonyl carbon does have four bonds to it. And I'm done. I made that ally. And on test number two, Unlike test number one, I'll usually have three or four synthesis problems. You've lost your rookie status. Yay. And now I can put a few more hard ones on there. Ooh.
Thank you, Andrew. Please be patient. We try and give everybody time to finish. If we we're in a classroom, I'd say, when you're done, look up and smile. And I get a lot of happy people sometimes in my class. All right, let's get to work. Now, how do we do a synthesis? Look for what's different, what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen, what's not a carbon-carbon single bond. Oxygen, double bond to carbon, well, hydrogen. And here I have carbons R, and this is an aldehyde. And what do you start with to oxidize to make an aldehyde? A primary alcohol. Now, another way of thinking of it is I end up with five carbons. I'm not adding carbons. So I better start with five carbons. The carbon with the carbonyl will be the carbon with the hydroxyl group. This carbon is this carbon. So it will have a primary alcohol. Then I just put in my hydrogens and I'm done. And that's how you would make that aldehyde. Oh, it's a pretty one too. Now you know I'm an organic chemist. All right. Let's continue on. Now, if you take a secondary alcohol and oxidize it, you will get a ketone. And I'll rewrite this in a nicer way. Remember, bracket O, bracket means oxidizing reagent. I'll lose this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and form a ketone. And by the way, both of these reactions I did not to make ketones and allies, I needed in my PhD thesis. So I know this reaction quite well. And why don't you try this one? While you're doing that, I'll be back in a second. I need to get some more water.
come back. And the question is, give the organic product or products or the following, look for what's different, what's not ox, what's not hydrogen, what's not carbon, what's not oxygen, no. I was getting ahead of myself. Oxygen, get your attention. And notice we have a carbon with a hydroxyl group. Carbons here and carbons here. And when we oxidize it, we form a carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen. And this carbon is this carbon, which is this one. You don't break carbon, carbon single bonds. I started with one, two, three, four, five. Better end up with one, two, three, four, five. I did. This carbon here is this carbon here, which is this carbon there. Double bond to oxygen. And there's four bonds to carbon. I'll put in my hydrogens. And with that, that's how you make a ketone. I just looked at the clock. We're out of time. Time flies when you're having fun with carbonyls and Dr. White. Now, remember, uh, starting today, this week, I have changed my office hours. They'll be on Tuesday and Wednesday from 6 to 7.15 in the evening, p.m. I hope that all gives you time to come to my office hours if you need extra help. And don't forget, the hand in the lab by Wednesday. And with that, I'm done. I'm going to say gang gazun. Goodbye. I'll stick around for a minute or two because I want to talk to someone. And with that, gang gazun. Goodbye. Stole that from Granny Beverly Hillbillies. Bye now.